it is our time again. We have tally sticks. Some of us are in space, but those of us that are on Earth count ourselves as fortunate. Uh, the last round of turns uh, before, you know, since ours, brought us tally sticks, as I've talked about before. Um, tally sticks, I think, are used for counting. Uh, it also, uh, there was a barbarian raid. The possessive man, Jonathan Bolton, did a barbarian raid on the hobbit lord Mimim, which I will show you why he chose to do it on the hobbit lord Mimim, or why I suspect he did. Look at that board presence. Wow. It's like um, some witch's disease. All these green spots on the face of Mother Earth. Upshot on those tally sticks is Little Red had to expend himself, so we cannot fulfill the manifest giraffe destiny this turn. He's too tired. So what can we do? Well, um, we're moving this way, so we would really like to play this card here. Uh, we were hoping someone would ransack the Dobbed Granary so that we could take that, perhaps, and get um, our fecundity, our uh, population track in, in control. Uh, another nice thing about that is we would have two innovation actions next turn. That didn't end up happening. No one took it. Um, which I don't know why. It's maybe maybe because they thought I was waiting for them to. Um, it's a nice card. So we have two choices of what we can do with our um, our innovation action. One is we can ransack. I guess we could always draw a fresh card, but it's kind of I, I like to ransack when there's there's good options out there because. Um, well, because you know what you're getting, and that's always nice. Um, we have the advantage that we can hold an extra card instead of just the one. Uh, that's what this this eye here does. It lets us hold another card. But yeah, we want to play this card because we're heading this way. And it looks like I'm wondering if maybe um, the Hobbit Lord Mimem isn't sending someone that way as well. Uh, um, I don't know. He's he's definitely expanding quickly. So I think we're going to want to play both of our cards. Um, and one reason for that is this card here, if we play it, it's nice. It would give us an elder, um, but since we we can't contain another elder, it would give us, it would allow us to reset Little Red. So that makes Giraffe happy. So she's definitely wants to play two cards. Um, flush and uh, Melky want to play the two cards because they want to they want to start moving that way, um, and so that means ransack is probably what we want to do. We would love the fecundity decrease, so I think we'll take the clay and cane baskets for the harem potential, um, and then I'm sorry, there's no real interesting debate on this one. It seems like people are pretty well in line, and then I guess we will play this one for the reset. Isn't this fun? You get to watch in real time as I move the pieces. And then we are going to play harems for that. And then I'm going to go type online and roll a d6 virtually to see if we go into chaos. I had a feeling it would happen. I, I really did. It, I didn't feel good when I clicked enter on, the, um, on my entry that had the die roll on it. Generally, I feel pretty positive about the die roll. I didn't this particular time, which is not to say I had any intuition, but uh, we went into chaos. It was a one in six chance, and we took that chance, and we're in chaos now. Uh, so what did, what happened? Well, Melky had to leave Africa. Um, he, he volunteered uh, after giraffes, all the delays for giraffe fulfilling her manager of destiny. He didn't feel like it was fair to ask her to go. He didn't want Flush to go because Flush is moving across the ocean, or getting close to. I guess now he's going to be delayed because um, we our turn ended before he could move. Um, and so it had to be him. He was kind of, he was in the least strategic position here. Really, he wasn't, there's no I guess he was near some gold, which could have possibly been useful later, but not that useful. Um, so he's gone. Our people are in disarray. Uh, but I feel like maybe it's they're, they're thinking about um, battle stations too much. Uh, hopefully, hopefully someone will upgrade our, our, life, um, our life module, our life preserver module, our life support module, so that... 
um, Melky can join the crew. I guess the twin notions of courtship and harems clashed in our fragile minds. Looks like we can't count on tally sticks anymore. That's right, Little Red, because tally sticks are now suppressed. We no longer have the benefit of our tally sticks. I think it's still worth points, though. Um, it would take, a, I think, a reset action to bring them back. Although I'm not going to give you a blow by blow because this is not the real people multi game solitaire mega tournament, um, I thought I would just check in with how people are doing. I've been playing for a little while now. Um, one thing that is immediately apparent to me is that it's nice to have these engines closer together. Here's Pegasus here running from this engine over to here because you can only pump them once per phase. Um, by the time she gets there, I think it might even be the next round and then she can. Or, yeah, once per round, I'm sorry, not once per phase. Um, it'll be the next round, and then she can, she'll have to run back. Um, well, she won't have to, but you know, by the time she gets here, it might be unnecessary. There's just nothing else for her to do except to run around right now. Um, by pumping en engines, that's what increases your power level here. Um, so far, things are looking all right for us, though. We're trying to um, basically take take this ship down. We get bonus points if we, we get some special bonus if we can capture it. Um, we came in and we launched right there, launched this missile. Uh, things have been going well, you know, not, not a lot. It's just been kind of like learning how to steer the ship and that kind of thing. The other guys, they um, have, a, have a big movement advantage, and I didn't realize how important movement was to the game, because a lot of times you have to move, especially for the engineer, you have to move from one module for the to the next. This engineer has a movement of five so it can go much faster. We had sort of an advantage because they started out in orbit. That made it so that their speed was much less. Um, so they're taking some time getting up to speed here. They're at speed three. We got speed six. Rather nice nice piloting by um, Cowboy who's playing blocky. Had some had some good assists by uh, Cat or not Cat Runt Runt here um, in the science bay. She had some really lucky rolls to assist. She has no piloting ability at all. But um, because she rolled a double six, I think, she was able to assist, um, which was like the she needed an 11 or higher. And that's a, that's a rare roll. She hasn't had a lot to do because since she was over here in the science bay and not in the hyperdrive, I couldn't, couldn't figure out why it would matter. See, what the, if they start off in the hyperdrive, they can um, make it so that we can jump in closer to our objective. Um, she can still try to do that from the science bay, but there's a penalty to it. Um, I, you know, I thought it would be better for her to start out in the science bay and just be ready to do all the great things the science bay can do. Hyperdrive, you can't do anything but leave, and we don't want to leave. Um, so we ended up way out here, not a very good roll. So we're just taking a lot of time to get up over there. Which might be bad in the long run, because I, I guess if we had jumped in closer, you know, they would have been moving slow. We would have already been moving faster than them. We jump in at four, and then we would have been able to do some stuff. Uh, so I am enjoying the game. It's starting to come together, uh, in my mind at least, how, how it all works. I don't know if I'm playing it correctly, but um, definitely a lot of fun. It, it has that feel of, you know, everyone has their little their tasks. And um, if you've watched science fiction television or um, read certain science fiction books about operating a, a spaceship, I think it would give that feel definitely. Um, you know, we have your missile people, and they're all in their different little rooms talking to each other through communication links. Um, what else can I say? Oh, yeah. Uh, Pegasus did manage to upgrade our life support module. So I think we would like to rearrange where these are. Um, but this this can now hold five. So that will that'll be a nice space for um, Melky, who is no longer going to be playing Pablo Origins for a while. Um due to the chaos. It's time to check back in with how peop how uh, how the duel is going in between this um, Zaloxian, I believe is what they're called. I always want to call them Tentacs because they're the ones that look like um, Jacks. I always think Pentac, I don't know, five, but they I think they actually have six appendages, so it doesn't make a lot of sense. Um, but anyway, they've gotten busted up pretty bad. Um, they got hit by a missile and then this huge cannon blast right through here. The the luck, I mean, the, 
ostensibly the two sides are even, right, uh, to start out with in this particular scenario. But the the heroes have luck, which lets them re-roll things more often. Um, and so that's that's actually come into play quite a lot. They also have special abilities beyond their racial special abilities, which the the Zaloxians do not have. So, you know, we do have a big advantage, and we we've been lucky. But as you can see here, there's a couple missiles chasing them. This is our ship here, um, which is going much faster than their ship. It's a nine or a ten, and theirs is going at seven because. Cowboy is a speed demon, which has really helped make things go quickly. Pegasus is still running around pumping engines. Um, these two have done a great job, Runt and Cat, in getting rid of the enemy missiles. They shot one of our missiles. We shot one of theirs, but um, Runt has been able to use her science abilities to make the other missile go, go awry and go the wrong way. But anyway, big news, we've damaged two of their modules and their engineer is down. He's not quite dead yet, but he's in negative hit points, so he's not gonna be able to do anything in, unless someone goes to fix him, which most likely this guy, but maybe not. Thought I should note, though, that Cowboy is running out of luck. He's had to use a lot of luck in order to um, steer the ship, since it's going so fast. The faster it goes, the, the harder it is to steer, um, and he keeps pushing it to the limit, so uh, it might be that the ship gets out of control here soon. Um, I'm kind of on this uh, attack run here, and if this doesn't pay off, um, then it might be hard to get the ship around to take another run at run at them. Okay, I just want to check back in with these guys because their story has actually been more interesting than um, the story of our our team here. Um, so they've lost both their science guy and their engineer guy and their pilot is very hurt he's got he's down to one health left and he's trying to you know just narrowly avoiding these two missiles that have been chasing him for a couple rounds now <laughs> he's just gotten very lucky um, even though he doesn't have luck points meanwhile the uh, marine who's fully healthy has spent his time trying to launch himself out of a missile so he can be safe um, he actually wants to launch himself onto their ship and try and take over their share ship, uh, which is you know, not necessarily mutinous, um, but he's definitely uh, kind of more focused on that than anything else. They're in bad shape, very little energy. They're gonna, they're slowing down every turn. He's reserving uh, the pilot's been reserving this helm power just to dodge missiles if he needs to. Um, their engines out, their science bay is out. They can no longer. Uh, charge up their shields, not that they have the energy to do so anyway. They're in, they're in, they're just limping along. Cat, as in Cat, uh, Ensign Capazoid has put herself in a very dangerous position. She's, she used a boarding missile to get aboard the enemy ship, which is totally, just really riddled, um, especially this portion of the ship. Um, each one of these modules with this marker on it doesn't work. These modules with two markers on it don't work and they're also hard to get across. They make it slower. Um, the other team has definitely a mobility advantage. Um, so she's on it alone with the other team's marine. Uh, and the problem is, is although her missile hit, the two missiles that we fired uh, much earlier are still just chasing. So they they could actually strike while she's there. Um, as far as what the other, the rest of the team is trying to do, they're trying to get their ship to be in line with the ship so that everyone can board and maybe take over. Not everyone, but more people. Um, there still is one missile chasing, however. Here was the Zaloxian. Um, Marine, he finally managed to get the missile bay to work for him, and he was he missed his first shot, um, and then he hit his second shot. However, what he hit was a bunch of garbage that Pegasus dumped out the airlock, um, and so he is destroyed. And you know, although there's a missile chasing us, uh, I'm gonna say we we got it. I, th I think we we won this particular mission, it, it wouldn't be that hard to deal with that missile now that um, that's really all we would need to focus on. Oh, wait, oh. Battle Stations is in, in a lot of ways a, a, a cooperative game. I think it's definitely in that 
that uh, category versus a competitive game. Um, I think we definitely saw that in this last match. Um, I think in part because I was just learning the game for the first time, which I don't normally video, but also because of the nature of cooperative games is to kind of um, maybe unify the different minds involved. I didn't play the characters as much in terms of their personality, I think. There was too much I was juggling, and in part, they're, you know, they're, they're talking to each other and making plans together, which is, in a way, kind of how, you know, just me making decisions in this case, because basically I'm diffusing and then coming back together. There was some uh, expression of personality in terms of, like, Cowboys, uh, he's really accelerating a lot. Um, Ka, her boarding action was, I think, personality driven in part, um, but for a lot, for the most part, they were kind of just doing what seemed like the best move. Like Pegasus, a lot of her activities was very automatic. You know, go to engine, pump engine, go to engine, pump engine. That's a lot of what she did. Um, and Runt spent a lot of her time just. She did a lot of assisting, really. Um, she was. Her, her science module is such that the more you use it, the worse it is. And so there's six phases of the game. If she's just sitting there, she's not going to be using it all the time. Uh, she's going to be using it to, to help pilot or help shoot, even though she wasn't that good at those things. She was all right with shooting. She actually definitely helped with the shooting. Um, and But one thing that's different about battle stations that I think is going to be uh, interesting to explore is that there is a continuance beyond, the, beyond each given contained uh, mission beyond each given game the characters do advance and how they perform actually affects them in the long run so I think it more closely models how actual human societies work because in the end we do all want to work together we do kind of have a common purpose for the most part in the broader sense we want I think most people want human humanity to survive uh, but within that, people want themselves to survive better <laughs> a lot of times. A lot of people do. Um, I think it depends on the way the society is structured and the, the, the kind of cultural messages we receive. But um, so there wasn't any, there wasn't really a lot of endangerment. You know, no one was really in danger this game. And I wasn't really thinking in terms of the personality terms uh, for, for their decisions as much. But I think as that kind of comes into play, there might be some more, um, there might be some, we might see some more selfish behavior. Um, also, I, I might st structure it so that performance in battle stations, especially when I get everyone involved in battle stations, um, affects the command structure in Origins. So, and performance and origins is what is ultimately going to affect um, the real people multi game solitaire mega tournament when these characters move on. So I think then also we might see some some um, behavior more akin to what we're seeing with um, some of our neighbors today. With all my babbling, I totally forgot to tell you um, there after the game happened when it came down to requisitions, there definitely was some of what I described, and I was trying to get to that, but I I went off on a tangent. Um, Cash showed herself to be quite the, sh the shrewd bargainer. So here's kind of how it went down. Cowboy and Pegasus were really interested in, in focusing on getting modules. They were the two, however, that didn't have any luck. I don't think Runt did either. Cow was the only one who did. And if you recall, Cow has focused on getting connected. So she gets more requisition attempts than everyone else. Requisitioning is you roll against the difficulty and you just get that thing. Um, that's the, probably the best way to get modules. Um, it's harder to get modules right now, though, because the rank is so low. Essentially, everyone has to roll an 11 uh, in order to do that. So Cowboy right off just rolled to get a module. He did not get an 11. He got a 10, though, which was very close. If he had luck, he might have been able to um, re-roll one of his fives and get the six, but he did not. Um, and then, so then some deal making happened, and Cat offered to use her requisitions and her luck in order to try and get the modules, which also helps her, right? If the ship gets more modules, that's better for everyone. Um, if they get three more modules, then we can upgrade to the next size of ship. Um, in exchange for 200 credits from both Pegasus and Cowboy each. Um, which they agreed to. Pegasus can't really get any get anything else because she's, she's too weak. She, she's 
carrying all that she can carry. So it wasn't she didn't really see any any benefit in using her money for herself right now. Um, and Cowboy just wants to soup up his ship. He thinks that the ship is his ship because he's the pilot. Um, now Runt, on the other hand, she wasn't involved in that. She was fine with the whole module thing, but she wasn't going to throw down money. Cow was okay with that. Um, they made their own deal, and Runt might have got a good deal on this. Runt used her requisition attempt to get uh, Cow a Vibra knife, which made it so Cad didn't have to spend money on that. In return, Runt got a hundred credits, which isn't as much as a Viber knife is worth. I think a Viber knife is maybe worth 300. I can't remember. Um, so what that did uh, was allowed Runt to get her science watch, which she really wanted to get. That gave her just enough to buy the science watch. So Runt was happy with that. Um, Cad was happy she got her Viber knife. She didn't have to spend any money. She was up $400. She got. She managed to get one new module for the ship. We haven't decided what that's going to be yet. So there was this kind of, um, you know, there's 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 a way that they probably could have done this more efficiently to everyone's benefit, but this way everyone kind of got a little bit of what they wanted um, through some very selfish actions and some very. I think, but I think what's important is some of the motivations weren't purely selfish. I think Pegasus was. Pegasus was thinking more in terms of everyone's benefit, you know, if we get more modules that's going to help everyone, versus a Viper knife, which is, I guess, useful, but maybe not as useful as a module is. Sorry, a quick note to give the another side of that. Um, if it weren't for Kaz's selfishness in, in getting, um, getting all the requisition attempts and the money, they wouldn't have had the opportunity to get the module in the first place. So there's like two sides to that coin. Definitely economic.